Stopping all stations except East Richmond via the city loop. If you've ever taken the Belgrave Lidl line on a regular basis, you'd be pretty familiar with this announcement. Indeed, for trains to Belgrave and Lidl, there's only actually a couple of trains per day that stop at East Richmond. This obviously begs the question, why do so few trains stop at East Richmond, and should that be the case? <laughs> To investigate why so few trains stop here, we need to go back in time and have a look at the history of the station. East Richmond Station itself originally opened as Church Street on the 24th of September 1860. At the time, trains only ran between the city and Picnic, a station on the west side of the Yarra River, stopping at Swan Street, which is now Richmond, Church Street, now East Richmond, and Burnley Street, now Burnley along the way. The station was renamed to East Richmond in 1867. From when the line was duplicated in 1882 until the 1960s, the station had two platforms, both with a distinctive Victorian-era waiting room being tightly knit around the surrounding factories and working-class residential homes. In December 1922, the line between the Melbourne CBD and Box Hill was electrified, and regular suburban electric trains with Tate and swing door sets began shortly afterwards. However, with electrification came a large growth in the number of services. East Richmond was positioned in a section of double track between Burnley and Richmond and then into the city centre. Over time, as Melbourne grew, the number of train services required to run through this section simply became too much for the antiquated double track to handle. Services on five, yes five, lines ran through this congested section, with trains from Glen Waverley, Kew, Ashburton, Upper Ferntree Gully and Lilydale all using this section from Burnley to the city. The congestion ultimately restricted frequencies quite considerably, not to mention the closed spacing of the stations, which further slowed down trains. To take an example, in the 1939 timetable, there were 12 trains from Ashburton, Box Hill, Ringwood and Lilydale over the one hour period from 7.05am, as well as 4 from East Morven, 3 from Kew and 2 from Upper Ferntree Gully, for a total of 21 trains during this period. This enormous frequency of a train less than every 3 minutes, many of which also ran express, meant that this section of line became a considerable bottleneck, preventing the expansion of service, especially with the extension of the Glen Waverley line and the continued growth of Melbourne. Hence, the Victorian railways began to consider upgrading this section of line, and this is where we can begin to see why East Richmond Station is so poorly serviced today. In 1940, the Ashworth Improvement Plan recommended the addition of an extra track pair from Flinders Street to Hawthorne. This was the first real plan to upgrade this section of line, and would have included the addition of two extra platforms at East Richmond. However, owing to the demands of World War II, not much of the Ashworth plan happened at all, and in this specific case, the only real work done was the addition of a flyover for Glen Waverley trains at Burnley. However, this was not the end of the upgrades for the busy Eastern Corridor. Post World War II, the lines to Belgrave and Lilydale were urbanising at their outer end, and the Ringwood line was rapidly becoming the busiest rail corridor in Melbourne, a status it would hold until the Pakenham Cranburn line overtook it more recently. This led to one of the largest track amplification projects that has been undertaken in Melbourne, and the direct reason why there are so few trains that stop at this station. In the early 1950s, the Operation Phoenix plan recognised the need to upgrade the corridor to the east of Flinders Street Station. This upgrade would need to include, among other things, the rebuilding of Richmond, East Richmond and Burnley stations to accommodate extra tracks. Prior to these upgrades, there were just three track pairs between the city and Richmond, which served nine lines, and Richmond Station had just six platforms. These platforms were old and located on a curve, and the station was wildly insufficient for the needs even back then. The Victorian Railways, hence, added two new track pairs from the city to Richmond, creating a new 10-track line in the process, while Richmond Station was rebuilt to have five island platforms as a 10-track station. As for East Richmond itself, the 1960s upgrades saw its city-bound, or up, platform demolished and replaced with two extra tracks, with a new platform built on the south side of these tracks. You can clearly see the difference between the 1960s shelter on the city-bound platform and the older waiting room on platform 2, which is perhaps the biggest evidence of this upgrade. This upgrade also saw the removal of the level crossing at Green Street, replaced with a pedestrian underpass, as well as the removal of several older road bridges in the area, such as Brighton Street. This left the station with four tracks, but just two platforms. This compares to nearby Burnley and Richmond, which both have four platforms for the Burnley group. During this section, the line is arranged in an up-up, down-down track format to allow for express trains to pass through without stopping. It was obviously not considered value for money to upgrade East Richmond station with four platforms, and this was certainly the right decision. 
Further east, track triplication also occurred between Burnley and Box Hill to allow for more express trains there. But now that we understand these upgrades, you can see why East Richmond is such a poorly served station. Trains coming from beyond Blackburn are almost always semi-express trains on weekdays, which don't travel by the local tracks between Burnley and the city, and consequently always skip East Richmond. Even on weekends, it's easier to separate the Glen Waverley and Ringwood lines for as long as possible, so only Glen Waverley trains stop at East Richmond. All of this has the consequence that, while East Richmond has an enormous number of trains passing through, one of the highest amounts of trains on the network, it hardly gets served itself. During the morning peak hour, for example, between 8 and 9am, there are 9 Glen Waverley and 23 Camberwell Corridor trains that pass through East Richmond, for a total of 32 trains per hour, more than a train every 2 minutes, and that's only in the city bound direction. But only the 9 Glen Waverley trains stop at East Richmond, only around 28% of the trains that pass through. Even on weekends, just 3 of the 9 hourly trains that pass through the station actually stop there, for around 33% of trains stopping. This is one of the lowest figures on the network, and perhaps might only be beaten by South Kensington. So of course, this leads us to ask whether the station and its service should be upgraded. On the service front, the answer is probably not. Upgrading the Glen Waverley line to have 6 trains per hour on weekdays off peak and on weekends will be sufficient during these times, and the peak hour service is perfectly fine, 9 trains an hour is pretty good. However, the station itself could do with some upgrades. The building's relatively unpleasant and there is minimal shelter on the remainder of the platforms, as well as little shade. If I could improve the station, I would likely increase the lighting, the improved shade and the amount of shelter available on these platforms, demolish the Platform 1 waiting room and replace it with a more modern one. It's just insufficient and out of date. Repave the platforms and add a more modern passenger information display to Platform 2. I mean, the existing one that's still there is still in a Connex scheme in 2024. Surely that needs an upgrade by now. And I would add an entrance exit on the western side of both platforms. Can this all be justified? Well, during the 2022-23 financial year, the station had 457,450 passengers. This is somewhat below the average of 669,039 passengers across the Metropolitan Network, and that figure also includes the Stony Point line which significantly drags it down. We can see that the station is therefore rather minor. To compare it with other nearby stations, Burnley had 709,000 passengers in that year, while West Richmond had 372,950. A similarly busy station to East Richmond would be West Footscray at 466,850 passengers, with East Richmond being the 78th busiest station out of 223 stations measured. Of course, this is a lot of data, but in essence, while East Richmond is not a particularly busy station, it also is not actually that quiet either, and is in the 36th percentile. Admittedly, the data will be somewhat skewed across the network, as a result of the large number of constructions due to rail improvement projects, among other factors. So, this could definitely be interpreted as meaning that East Richmond is not busy enough to justify extra service, or it could be suggested that its patronage is suppressed by the lack of that service. As I mentioned earlier, I think the most logical conclusion would simply be that Glen Waverley trains should stop here at least every 10 minutes, but more than that, there is not enough demand to justify all Belgrave Lidale trains stopping here in either the off-peak or let alone peak hours. Thank you very much, I hope you've enjoyed this video and learnt why so few trains stop at East Richmond and I look forward to releasing some more videos in the near future.